Hey everybody, this is um uh, the Love and Hip Hop special that came on called Out in Hip Hop, which is based um solely on um gay rappers in the hip hop industry and it aired last night. It was pretty good. I watched it. Um so let's get into it. Um it started off with um them showing Miles coming out to um Amber, which is the episode that aired prior on TV, and, um, you know, they're basically, they basically asked Miles, how was it for him to come out on TV, and, you know, he basically admitted that it was hard, because that's the reaction that he didn't want from anybody, but it was something that had to be done, which is true, so they were asking, like, a panel, um, questions, Big Frida was there, Fizz and Ray J from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood was there. Um, what's the guy name? He's a gay rapper, Fly something. I'm so mad I forgot his name. But um, he was there. Um, Karamo. Um, quite a few different people were there. Um, D. Smith, a transgender woman was there like it was a bunch of people there like all in the audience or whatever i don't remember everybody's name exactly but i'm just gonna go through what they talked about so um you know they basically said that they're you know once they come out it's like a um it's like a problem like there's there there is homophobia in hip-hop but it's calmed down since back in the day and um you know ray j has said at one point that it's um you know you even get discriminated by association like if you're if you're cool with uh, um if you're cool with somebody who's gay you know they they associate you with being gay and whatnot and even um DMC from Run DMC he was there and he was like um, you can be gay in the industry, but you can't be a rapper. You could be the stylist, you could be the makeup artist, you could be the choreographer, you could be anybody else, but you can't be the rapper. And if you're the rapper, it's a problem. But you know, and DMC was also like barriers have been broken. You got people like Salt and Pepper, Roxanne, Shantae, all these people. They've opened the doors for women. You've got um, Eminem, Beastie Boys, um, who opened the doors for white MCs. But when it comes to, like, gay rappers, it's a problem. Like, you know, rappers will wear um, fashions from gay clothing designers, but then turn around and, you know, diss gay rappers or diss the gay community. And it's hypocritical. So, um, you know, a lot of them feel like um, they were even speaking like Big Frida, and they were like, do you feel like people put on this, like, facade and whatnot and big frida is like listen i already knew coming into this that it was going to be people who didn't agree with what i was doing but i wasn't going to change who i was to to please them i work and i do what i want to do and also the other rapper um he oh god i'm so mad i can't remember his name please somebody put it in the comments for me but i know it's fly something but he made like a um a song that was strictly for gay people and it went viral on um, YouTube. And, you know, because it's people who are homophobic, they were threatening to, like, kill him if he ever gets booked in Philly and all of this. And he said, well, I didn't make this song specifically for you. I made it for my gay people, my the gay community, and the song was for them. So, um... You know, but he's like, I'm not going to change who I am. I am a gay rapper. I am a gay man. I love men. So that was me show, you know, showing that. And it shouldn't be a problem. So then they got into the hostile language in hip hop and how women are always called bitches and all of that. So they also threw, threw the F word in there. I'm not going to say it because I don't like that word either. But, um, you know, they were always saying like, um, when it comes to like them booking shows or whatever and um big frida was like she had to do some um well he sorry he had to do a show where um he had to like hype up the crowd basically and then um the artist that was coming out said something to the effect of oh you let this you know f word 
um, on my mic. Like, it was a problem. So, you know, Big Frida was like, well, I am a gay man. And, you know, so what? I, I sell out shows. I'm doing good. So, yeah. You know, like, basically, like, you're trying to hurt my feelings, but I'm making you money. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. Fly Young Red. That's his name. Fly Young Red. I actually wrote it down. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Fly Young Red. Him. Um. Yeah, so he's the one that made the song Throw That Boy P Word. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it went viral, but he got like a lot of backlash for it because it's a strictly gay song. So, um, then they went to, um acceptance in church and they had two gay pastors up there and they had a pastor um via skype um or satellite or whatever who he was kind of like i don't want to say he was against it but he wasn't really for it and you know the gay pastors are like yeah you know i'm a gay man but i preach the word and i make it so that gay people don't feel like they're outcast they don't feel like they're blacklisted like i want them to feel welcome i want them to feel safe and the pastor i think his name is pastor bryant the one that was on satellite he said that um just because someone doesn't agree with your lifestyle does not mean that they don't um agree with you or that they're gay bashing you it just means that um they just don't agree with it and that's what it is he was like, people always, um, people always make something like more than what it is. You know, if a person, he was like, we could just agree to disagree, you know, but we love, you know, we love you all or whatever. And a Karamo went in, you know, cause, um, Pastor Bryant was basically like, um, um, can there be, ugh, because I got it on notes and my dad on iPad just cut off. Um Oh, like can there be um I'm trying to word it right. Okay. So he was like they basically can agree to disagree. And Pastor Brian was like he feels like um you know, he offers counseling and all of that in the church and whatnot for gay people. And at that point, T.J. Holmes had asked him, so do you think that you can change the way a person thinks when it comes to being gay? He said, I do believe, he said, I don't think I could change a person, but I do believe that, you know, they can be transformed. So as soon as he said that, Karamo got offended and he was like, um, see, you can't say that you love us, but that you want to offer your counseling to transform us. There is no trend, like you can't, you can't, this is not something you can transform. So... The main question was, are people born gay? Big Frida was like, yes, I was born this way. And God knew who I was before I even touched the earth. So if you can't accept that, then it is what it is. And I mean, in my opinion, I do feel like people can be born gay. Because a lot of people who come out of the closet, they already know what they like and, and what they're into at a young age but it's just that nobody's willing to listen and it's like you know parents sometimes don't take it serious but people kids be knowing like by the age of five and they'll know that something's not right so it's like you know adults shrug it off like oh it's just a phase or whatever but if your kid is constantly coming to you like no like this is serious this is how I really feel this is what you know so I mean, I think just off of my own personal experience, like I'm not gay, but I have gay friends. I have gay family members. You can be born gay. Like you just, you like what you like. And it's the same as like being born, like just like knowing, like you, you like what you like. So, you know, okay, I like men or I like women. You know what you like. So, it's a preference, but I do feel like people know when they're a certain age, when they're young. And it's mostly, you know, that's when it starts. A lot of them will say four, five, you know, and then they'll hide it or whatever because they feel like people won't accept it until they get a certain age and they can no longer hide it. 
Look at Bruce Jenner. Look at um Carmen Carrera. Like all of these people who are transgendered, who who are gay or bi or whatever, they knew at a at a at a certain age that they were different. You know, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Being gay is nothing wrong with that. Like, people make it bigger than what it is. So, um, yeah, and even one of them, because I forgot his name too, even one of them was like, if you want to meet a bunch of gay people, just go to church. Which is true, because a lot of people that go to church are people who are, they hide in their own skeletons. They just didn't come out with it yet. But that's where a lot of that happens. Like, that's where you find a lot of, you know, I mean, just like on the earth period, where you find a lot of, you know, gay people, bi people, transgender people, rapists, molesters, um, criminals, all of that. They they go to church, you know, so it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like you come as you are in church, you know, so it's like. Yeah, he had a point. Like, if you want to meet, if you want to see a bunch of gay people, if you want to see, you know, a, a bunch of gay black people, judgmental people, you know, go to church. Because that's where it all, that's, that's where it is. And you can't say that it's not because every church has their own set of people that come to the church with their own problems, with their own situations. Like, everybody's different. So, I'm like, yeah, you had a point there. So, um... Now they were talking about gay influence and fashion and how Kanye and ASAP Rocky and I think Young Thug, how they wear kilts or whatever. You know, a kilt is like a skirt and, you know, people kind of like praised it or side-eyed it and they're like, why does it take for a straight person to wear a gay piece of fashion? But if a gay person wears that fashion, you know, they're shunned like it's a problem and they're like, um, you know, you got Kanye wearing skirts and you got Nicki Minaj who's like hypersexualized wearing whatever she wants and she gets praised for it. But once a gay person wears something, you know, it's a problem, you know? And I mean, it is kind of like, it, it's hypocritical. It really is. And they were saying that what Kanye wears and what ASAP Rocky wears and all of that is gender fluid. And it's like, to me, it's like, why does it matter? You know, if Kanye likes wearing skirts, Kanye likes wearing skirts. If, you know, if Young Thug likes wearing skinny jeans or skirts and all of that, then okay, so what? But at the same time, you can't want to wear those clothes and then want to diss the LGBT community. It doesn't work that way. And it's very hypocritical. So, um, they were also talking about changing who you are to fit in. And, um, Saya was there and Felicia Snoop Pearson from The Wire was there. And Saya was like, you clearly see that I'm a masculine female. So why should I have to have my titties out and wear dresses and all of that to be accepted? I'm me. And Snoop said the same thing. I love women, you know. This is who I am. I'm never going to change who I am to fit in. Like, this is me. And if you can't accept me for me, then you don't have to deal with me. So, um, they got into the, um, talk of bisexuality. Because Miles said that he's bisexual because he was with, um, Amber for, I think, like 10 years. And then he was with Miles for two. Not Miles. Dang. Milan for two. So, they were saying it's different when a man is bisexual versus a woman. Because they're like, women can go from a man to a woman when there's no problem. But if a man does it, he's just labeled gay or whatever. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I did have that mindset at one point. But now I get what they mean. Like, you like what you like. So if a man likes a man and a man likes a woman, that makes him bisexual. And it's kind of like iffy. Bisexuals don't have like their own place in the LGBT community. It's like with a man, you're either gay or you're straight. But with a woman, you could be a lesbian or you can be heterosexual and nobody will, you know, blink an eye. And that was that was another point that I made too, I think in a vlog when I said nobody had a problem with Erica Mena and Sin Santana in season three and season four of Love and Hip Hop New York being on TV kissing, but people got a problem with Miles and Milan being on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, 
you know, kissing in the bed together. And everything. Nobody had a problem with them, but they got a problem with this. So it is different. It really is. It is different. And it's this whole thing is like hypocrisy. And I mean, I get it. So, um, they had D. Smith come and discuss her transition and how her tra her transitioning took everybody out of their comfort zone and it made people a little uneasy, but she still had the support or whatever. And, um, you know, they basically saying, um... Because I just wrote down the topic. So I'm trying to word this right. <clears throat> so they were basically saying like you know. When it comes to being like a transgender black woman. You still don't get respect. Because people still feel like oh. You're a man. Um, you're never going to be a girl. You're never going to do this. You're never going to have what women have. You're never going to have a uterus. And all of this other stuff. But it's like. If, if I want to be called. Um she or he respect that and deal with it you know you don't have to like it but you need to respect it and that's the thing it's a respect factor that needs to be worked on and like now they're still talking about all the transgender women that's been killed recently and it, yeah they're, they're being killed left and right you know just for being who they are so now they're like you know if we say all all black lives matter, then that means the black transgender woman, the black transgender man, the heterosexual woman, heterosexual man, that kid, that cop, all black lives matter. So you can't just pick and choose what matters and what doesn't, you know? So I'm like, that's a valid point. So they were just like, um, you know, if you, if you ever, if you're having problems coming out or, um, anything, it's like, or you see what's going on. You can't compare your situation to someone else's. Because everybody's situation is different. So now they're like. What is the um, what are the signs that we're getting better at it? And you know. They were like. Well people are being like more. Like they're doing their research. And they're. Um, getting. Like it's being shown in the media. On TV. So people are, are you know. Getting the fact that there is. Like, the LGBT community does exist. They have feelings. Um, this is the stuff that they deal with. This is the stuff that you're trying to work on making better. So, it's starting to become, like, people are starting to accept it more and just deal with it and move on. So, they were like, none of that should even be an issue when you have some people that's part of the LGBT community who are homeless who are going through the struggle or whatever. So that should be more important to focus on rather than who a person lays up with at night, which is true. So, you know, they basically gave their own like advice to those who are struggling. And it's just like, you know, they bait. Well, VH1 has the website out in hip hop, but they have, um, different resources for, um, people who are struggling to come out. Um, and, you know, it basically ended on that point. And I mean, I gotta say, like, it was a pretty good special. I mean, it was good that, you know, you had Ray J and Fizz there as like, um, the ones that are like, like, it's a different point of view because Ray J and Fizz are both, you know, they, they date women, but they know people who are gay in the industry. And Fizz even said, you know, it was being talked about in the group that I was in people always want to say we were gay we were this so that's where it comes from like discrimination by association so you know I mean all in all it was a pretty good special it did touch on a lot and you know even Ray J said um when you are offensive and like saying no homo or pause or something like that you know um it's offensive, so, you know, we got to get rid of that and just work on accepting each other better. So, you know, it was a pretty good special. I enjoyed watching it. I learned a lot. And me, like I said, I'm always for the LGBT community. I love my gays, love my lesbians, love 
bi I, well, I don't really know any bisexual people, but I would love the hell out of them too, cause <laughs> you know they're they're people. I don't really look at I don't care about what people do in their lives as long as it doesn't affect me. I care about your character. So you know this was a really good special. It really opened my eyes to a lot of the issues that go on within the LGBT community. So I applaud VH1 for this special. And you know, let me know what you guys thought about it. Um, if I left anything out, let me know if I left anything out. Um, but yeah, this was a really good special, so I enjoyed it. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend, and I'll see you in the next video. Later.